Patrick Young presenting Physics 2211 Lab Number 1. So to start off, this lab applies Newton's fundamental laws of physics in the real world. Beginning with the momentum principle, i.e. the second law of physics, Newton tells us an object in motion will stay in motion until acted on by an unbalanced force. In ideal conditions, no friction. An object with an initial velocity or momentum will continue that motion with those same magnitude of values for an infinite time t. That is until it would be acted upon by an unbalanced force or something that could cause acceleration or deceleration. Essentially, when the net force is zero, the moment the object's momentum will continue constantly due to the conservation of momentum. Our experiment sets out to compare a computer model to a real-world scenario. We use an object moving with a constant velocity. We take the initial conditions and then use Python to then create a model of that object on the computer and compare those expected values to the experimental values. So here are the relevant calculations for this experiment. We have the AND formulas. We have the velocity update formula right here, which is V of final equals V initial plus F net over M delta T, and that's in the code as well as position R final equals RI plus V average delta T, also here in the code. And then my initial velocity calculations right here at the bottom, which we use to input into Python. All right, here we're jumping into Tracker to look at what exactly was going on. So here I have set my frame limit at the bottom and then set the origin at the orange right here. As we play through, we show the tracking frame by frame. And then we see what is outputted on the right side as well as over here, all the data. And so this is my Tracker. Uh, this is what the conditions I set, the origin, everything is on the floors. Basically, try to be as straight as possible along with the door frame. So, yeah, that's the tracker data. Alright, so now we jumped into a uh, glow script right here to take a look at the code. As you can see, I've set the radius to be around uh, 8 centimeters because that is the radius of the orange. The ball mass is approximated. And so here I have the ball's position and velocity initial vectors implemented. And then also within this while loop, I have changed the T. And then I have also implemented the momentum principle right here and the position update formula. And then down here I have the values that will be printed in the table. So when I run this, it's very clear to see that this object follows a similar path as the orange in the tracker video, and then the data is outputted here. So now we're going to jump to Excel to examine that data. All right, so now we're in Excel. We can see here we have two data sets. On the left side, we have our experimental data, and then on the right side, we have the data from GlowScript. So we I plotted both of those onto a chart and then we can see here that this line with the orange dots is the computational model and then the line below that is my experimental model and so I also have the linear regression and so we see that both of them are very linear with the computational model outputting r squared of 1 which is to be expected and then this over here my experimental the r squared value is not exactly 1 yet the line of best fit is still very linear Okay, let's wrap this up. So the object, when given an initial velocity and no net force, moved at an almost constant velocity. The data is not perfectly linear, yet it's linear enough. The orange obviously moves at a slower velocity than the model predicted. The R-squared values have very minimal difference. However, the slopes of best fit were off by approximately 0.1. So the orange did not roll in a completely straight line. Its distribution of mass caused it to shift slightly towards the camera on, later on in the video, thus causing the separation seen between the expected versus experimental values. So what if? What if we analyze our video and track it and we flip the axes? So if we decide to flip the axes with the x direction becoming the negative x direction and vice versa, our graph would look something like this, positive x to the left and negative x to the right. Thus, our resulting position versus time graph would look like this, with a position moving away in a ne like negative slope. And so what, let's move on to the last question. So it's 
I would say for this experiment, there's no way to tell the exact amount of pushes and pulls that were required to create a net force of zero. We do know, however, because the velocity is constant, that the net force must be zero, and our measurements were taken as a whole of the system, not just one push or pull. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Patrick Young, Physics Lab Number One.